In this tutorial, we'll take a look at entering and editing text in eDesign. For the first example, we'll start out with a blank page. Switch to the text tool by selecting it in the tool panel. To create a new text frame, simply click and drag with the text tool. When you release the mouse button, a new text frame is created. So that I can see the text more easily, I'll go to the Zoom menu and choose to zoom in on the frame at 200%. I'll now click and place my text cursor inside the frame. With the cursor in the text frame, you can simply type in your text. eDesign has a built-in spell check function that checks your spelling as you type. If you enter a word that's not in the standard dictionary, the word will be underlined in red to indicate that it may be misspelled. Place your cursor inside the underlined word and right-click. If you're on a Mac with a one-button mouse, you would control-click you'll see a list of suggested changes. If you see the correct spelling, choose it from the list and the word will be corrected. To format the text, click and drag over it to select it, just as you would in a word processing program like Microsoft Word. With the text that you would like to format selected, go to the control panel at the bottom of eDesign to access the text formatting controls. You can change the font of the text in the font menu. The font menu will show you all of the Herf Jones fonts that your advisor or editor have activated for use in eDesign. You can also change the size of the text by selecting one of the preset sizes. Or you can enter a custom size by clicking in the field, selecting the current value, typing in the new size, and pressing enter or return on the keyboard. The color swatch to the right will allow you to change the color of the selected text. The colors available to you will be those that have been activated by your advisor or editor and those that are currently active on the spread. The next control to the right allows you to adjust the text tracking. Tracking refers to the amount of space between characters. Choosing a negative value will bring the characters closer together. Choosing a positive value will spread the characters further apart. Now adjusting the tracking of text is usually only done in special situations and your advisor or editor may have a policy against adjusting the tracking of text, so be sure to check with them first. Beneath the tracking control is the line spacing for the paragraph. The technical typographical term for this is the letting of the text. The higher the value, the further apart the lines will be spaced. As with tracking, you should check with your advisor and editor about their policy regarding adjusting the line spacing. The next set of controls allows you to change the alignment of the text. Align to the left, align to the right, centered, or justified. Let's now look at how you can work with the existing text frames on a template. Most of the Herf Jones templates have text frames in place that contain placeholder text. Select one of the frames and zoom in on it. I currently have my selection tool active. I can switch to my text tool, or I can just double click on the text frame. Double clicking on a text frame with the selection tool will automatically switch you to the text tool and place your cursor inside the frame. This text frame has placeholder text that I want to get rid of. I can click and drag to select the text, or I could right click inside the text frame. From the context menu, choose Select All, and all the text in the frame will be selected. I can then hit Delete on the keyboard, or I can simply type in my new text. And that's how you enter and format text in eDesign. From time to time, as you're editing text, you'll see a red diamond appear on the right side of the text frame. This is eDesign's way of telling you that you have overset text. This means that the text that you've entered in the frame will not all appear in the frame at its current size. There are a few ways that you can fix this. You could make the text frame larger. You can edit the text so that there are fewer words in the frame. You can format the text to appear at a smaller size. You should check with your advisor or editor before changing the size of your copy or captions to make text fit. Generally, it is best to keep a consistent font size for the copy and captions throughout the book. If you are not allowed to change the size of the text, you will have to edit the text to make the text fit in the frame, 
or adjust the layout to allow for a larger text frame. If you are not sure what is causing the overset text warning to appear, you can hover your cursor over the red diamond and this pop-up will appear and show you what text is overset. This can help you decide how best to resolve the overset. In some cases, you may see that the overset pop-up appears and contains no text, or at least it appears to contain no text. In most cases, this is the result of there being extra spaces or paragraph returns after the last word of the text. These extra spaces or paragraph returns are causing the overset text marker to appear. You can resolve this by placing your cursor after the last word and pressing the delete key a few times to remove the extra spaces or paragraph returns. And that's how you resolve overset text in eDesign. Character styles are preset text formatting definitions that can be set up by your advisor or your editor. Character styles make the formatting of text quick, easy, and accurate. In this tutorial, we'll look at how you can put character styles to use. I'm here on a spread in page design. I want to format a sidebar story that will go on this page, and I just received an email from the copywriter with the text of the story. We'll copy and paste the text from the email into eDesign, but you can use character styles on any text that you type. I'll select the text in the message, right-click, and choose Copy. I'll then switch back over to eDesign, grab the text tool, and draw a text frame. My cursor is inside the text frame, so I'll right-click again and choose Paste. I know that this formatting is not what my sidebar story should look like. I could try to remember how the text is supposed to be formatted, but lucky for me, the advisor has set up character styles to make the formatting easy. I'll select the text that I want to format. In this case, I'll right-click in the text frame and choose Select All. I'll then go to the Character Styles menu in the control panel at the bottom. There are several preset character styles that are loaded by default into eDesign. Even if your advisor or editor has not created any custom styles, you should still see a few standard ones here. From the list of character styles, I'll choose the custom style Sidebar Copy. And just like that, my text is formatted as it should be. I know that in our stories we have a different style for names that appear in the copy, so I'll select the name, go to the Character Styles menu, and choose Sidebar Names. As you can see, using character styles can make your text formatting much easier, faster, and more accurate. If your advisor or editor have not yet created any character styles for your book, talk with them about the possibility of putting this feature to use. In this tutorial, we'll look at a strange sounding but useful feature called text frame padding. We'll pick up with the example of the sidebar that we were working with in the previous tutorial on character styles. We have this text frame with our formatted sidebar text. I'd like to add a color fill to the text frame, so I'll select it and add a fill to the frame in the control panel. The black text is too hard to read on this dark background, so I'll select the text and change the text color to white. However, I don't like how close the text is to the edge of the frame, so I'm going to use text frame padding to add a forced margin around the outside of the text frame. I'll double click on the text frame with the selection tool to switch to the text tool and place my cursor inside the frame. You must have your cursor inside of the text frame in order for the text frame padding option to appear in the control panel. The text frame padding control is found here. By default, it's set to zero. The measurement is in points, just like font size. For this example, I'll enter a value of 12 points and hit enter or return on the keyboard. This will put a forced 12 point margin on the inside of the text frame. Now, no matter how I move, resize, or reshape the text frame, the 12 point internal margin is maintained. And that's how you use text frame padding in eDesign. Using TextWrap can add a professional touch to your yearbook designs. When TextWrap is activated, the text in a frame will automatically wrap around objects and shapes on top of the text frame. Let's look at how you make this happen. We're back with the sidebar text frame that we worked with in the previous tutorials. I've added a headline to the sidebar, and now I would like to add photos of the students featured in the story. I use the ellipse tool to create these circle image frames, 
and I added a stroke around the circle in the same color as the fill on the text frame. After creating the frames, I added the pictures of the students. None of this is required to make TextRap work, I just thought it would look good. TextRap works with any kind of shape created with the shape tools or the pen tool, whether the shape has an image in it or not. Now I want to activate TextRap. I'll double click on the text frame with the selection tool to switch to the text tool and place my cursor inside the frame. You must have your cursor inside the text frame for the text wrap settings to appear in the control panel. The text wrap options are found here. By default, text wrap is set to none. I'll click on the center option for shape wrap. This will cause the text to wrap very naturally around the shapes that overlap the text frame. Now when I select one of my circle image frames and overlap them on the text frame, you'll see that the text actually wraps around the object shape. I'll put my cursor back in the text frame and go back to the text wrap options. The wrap padding is set here. If I enter a positive value in wrap padding, it will push the text farther away from the shape. I'll enter six points here to push the text a little farther away from the shape. I've now repositioned all five of my image frames, and you can see that the text is interacting with all five of them. I'll duplicate some of these items and place them on the right-hand page to illustrate the shape jump option. Now I'll place the image frame inside the text and see that the text wraps all the way around the shape on both sides. I'll now put my cursor inside the text frame and change the text wrap option to shape jump. Now the text stops at the top of the object and picks up again at the bottom of the object. The shape jump option is not used very often, but it can be helpful in some situations. There are a couple of other things you need to know about text wrap. First of all, text will only wrap around shapes that are above the text frame. In an earlier tutorial, we discussed the arrange options and the concept of the stacking order. I'll select this text frame Go to the Object menu and choose Bring to Front. Now that the text frame is on top of the circle, the text does not wrap around. I'll select the circle frame and choose Bring to Front again, and the text wrap kicks back in. The second thing to note is that text wrap only works with text that is aligned to the left. It does not work with text that is centered, aligned to the right, or justified. And that's how you use text wrap in eDesign. Text on a Path is an easy way to add cool graphic effects to your yearbook. Text on a Path can be used with any path or shape in eDesign, but for this example, I'll stick with placing the text on a circle. We'll go back to the sidebar story that we've been working with in the previous tutorials. I think it would be a nice touch to add the students' names and grades to the outside of their photo frames, and I want to do this with Text on a Path. I'll pull out this first image frame so that we can see the whole circle. With the frame selected, I'll access the text on a path controls by going to the object menu and choosing add text to path. Or I can go to the control panel and click on the text on a path button. The text on a path dialog box appears and I can type the student's name and grade in the text window here. You'll notice that the text is now appearing along the outside of the image frame. I'll select the text in the window and apply some formatting. I can change the font, the size, and the color of the text. The tracking value controls how much space is placed between each individual letter. A positive value spreads the letters out. A negative value brings the letters closer together. The distance value controls how far away from the path the text appears. If I enter a positive value in the distance field, the text is pushed away from the path by that amount. I can now use the position slider to change where on the path the text appears. I'll move it around to this position so that it will show on the outside left of the image frame. The flip checkbox can be used when you want the text to appear on the opposite side of the path. In this case, it would put the text on the inside of the circle instead of the outside. You also have access to any character styles that have been created for your book. I'll click OK to accept these settings. I can come back to adjust the text or the settings at any time by selecting the object 
and reopening the text on a path dialog box. I have now